Caddis Max. I'm going to share this time with a little a review of a different type of tool. This is a BK Precision 1735 uh, Laboratory DC Variable Power Supply. The reason these types of power supplies are called laboratory power supplies is for two reasons. Well, several reasons. They are used in electronic laboratories, as well as being infinitely variable. We can set our voltage to anything we want, up to 30 volts with a maximum of 3 amps output. This would be considered the most common style of these DC laboratory power supplies. The big deal that they're used and why it's such a large unit for seemingly low voltage and low amperage is because these are known as a linear transistor regulated power supply. They put out extremely extremely low noise DC power in addition to allowing you to adjust the voltage and limit the current it does have a maximum of 3 amps output yet you can use these dials here and it's kinda hard because it's a big unit and giving you a close enough look I have to tilt it up here one of the big advantages is that you can actually take the current and limit it what that allows you to do is to perform tests on electronic equipment, say testing out these kind of LED lights I like to take apart, and it allows you to, or it's a safety measure, it can prevent you from running too much power through a piece of equipment. So you know, okay, I'm running with an LED, I know that something like this isn't going to use more than, say, 5 watts. So you could limit the current to something very low, say 300 milliamps or 200 milliamps, or 0.2 amps and then you could increase the voltage seeing where you want it and make sure that you actually don't overload the piece of equipment maybe by running too much voltage because if it starts running too much current because your voltage is too high it will start limiting that current then of course it, it once you've hit the max of the current your voltage won't go up anymore and it's really one of the big deals is being able to limit the amount of amps that are going to something that you're testing or building these types of units are also designed to operate at full output continuously and the output varies due to the nature of these if you have one amp at 10 volts that's only 10 watts so at a maximum of 3 amps at 10 volts this would only put out 30 watts there isn't a way to make it say put out 90 watts worth of power at any voltage it's only at its maximum where it's set to 30 volts and you're using the 3 amps. So it's something to be aware of. These types of power supplies actually can be linked together not to provide more voltage. You need ones that are integrated and rated for the higher voltage, but as far as current, yes, you could have 10 of these and you could set them all as close as you can to the same voltage and you would have 30 amps of output. And what would happen is soon as one that was just a slightly lower voltage would start to drop a little bit of voltage, uh, it's known as power supply leading. Uh, others would start to pick up the slack and it's one of the neat things is that you can take multiples of these and attach them together if you do need more amps within reason within the connectors anyway that's enough kinda about the general power supply let me just do a quick demonstration of what I mean about setting the current limits this I like this one many of them just have a coarse setting I also recommend the ones that have digital displays just because they're easier to deal with the ones with the analog displays are either real cheap are really old. This unit's already 20, over 20 years old. They are American made, or at least they used to back when this was made. B&K Precision is a California company and they've been pretty respected. They've been around for more than 50 years. So these are all over eBay, around 50 to $70 ship for one that's like this style. A 30, 0 to 30 volt, 0 to 3 amp uh, with a digital display. And that'd be from, you know, just this brand. I do like this one because it has a real fine control. So we can just bring this up and we can't even really tell how fine that control is because it'll only really boost 1.1 to 0.2 volts of, of variation. Anyway, let's say we have something here. What? And it does allow you to set it a little bit more precisely. You just get it rough with that. And if I wanted 1.5, I'd go right there. And literally, on some more modern ones, it will tell you the current that you're set to without actually having to short the power supply. But this is actually what you need to do with these old ones, is you, you just quickly connect it up, and we can see that we're limited. If we drop this down, we can actually drop the power. We can see all the voltage disappeared because we are 
we've this is a gross overload but that's a demonstration of the current limiting is that we can set this situation up and we can have it be very low power and it provides us a level of protection and these are some common connectors I just made these are spring loaded little hook ones so they can just spring and hook onto something and then we have more traditional alligator clips and some day I'll make a video but there's a huge variety of different types of connectors and wires and cables for dealing with electronic equipment not just power supplies but as well measurement as well I got a meter set up just to show the fine control so we'll just use and this is set up to read four and a half digits which is uh, 10 times more accurate than it would be just a standard grade meter but the controls really are pretty linear this is using the course control and I can get it pretty close, but let's say I'm working on something that really needs 2.5 volts. And actually, I got it pretty darn close just using my hands there. But what I would want to do is use the fine control, put it about in the middle so I can go up and down with it. Excuse me, this is a quarter volt is what I'm trying to set up. Not 2.5, but just a measly one quarter of a volt. So now I've gotten it pretty close, and now I can just tune up the fine control. And as you can see, the fine control, I can actually go up by one ten thousandth of a volt. That's four decimal places. This is, it isn't showing the zero. This is 0 0.2289 volts, and I can go right up to 0 0.2291 pretty incredibly fine control it really is pretty amazing so I can go right up here whoop not quite enough it's pretty difficult when you're trying to do it at a very low voltage but the point is that having a fine control gives you the ability to set extremely precise voltages much higher than the internal displays will show for those situations where you may be doing something uh, more important, like testing, using a power supply to test something involving microchips and processors, which could be sensitive to 1 or 200, 0.1 or 0.2 volt differences. And I've always enjoyed this power supply for this reason. So a big deal to have these for just in a, somebody's shop who does, you know, a bit of do-it-yourself and a little bit of electrical stuff is since it's a variable DC power supply. Anything that you are missing batteries or don't currently have batteries for, you can use this to set it to whatever voltage you need. 9 volt battery, set this to 9 volts and use it as a replacement battery. It's great for all sorts of little testing, like I have these little LED things here. And it's pretty great, you know. I have no idea what voltage these things really run at. I do have an idea of what's positive and negative. And even in this situation, I could slowly come up on the voltage in around 2 volts, 2.5 volts. If I didn't see any light, I knew I would have it backwards without risking burning it out. And so with this LED, what I can do is I can, I have a general idea of how bright LED or how much voltage an LED uses. One of these little white ones may use, you know, somewhere around 3 volts. The way they're wired up on this may be... Uh, a combination of a series and parallel and we'll see that it'll be obvious in the voltage and so I can use this to bring up the voltage until I see this as being as bright as I so I do is connect it I don't have the current limited because I'm gonna be real slow and I start bringing up the voltage until I can see some kind of light output here and so I'm all the way up at 12 volts I know that isn't just a standard LED. I know that these are now series parallel. And since it's barely light, actually, you probably can't even tell that it's lighting up at this point. So it's definitely higher than 12 volts, but not by much. There's The difference between 12 and 13 volts is quite a bit of brightness. So as I increase this, I'd say that's pretty bright. I don't, this is on a metal plate, so this would be, 15 volts pi, 0.1 amps or 100 milliamps. That means at this brightness, we're using literally 1.5 watts. And so if I wanted to connect this to, say, an 18 volt power supply, I could get an appropriate resistor that would make sure that I didn't get any more than 1.1 amps to the LED. And then I'd be able to connect it to, you know, some laptop power supply and make my own custom light. 
I think this probably will go a little bit brighter. It is a pretty powerful LED. It may be a 16 volt. Yeah, it's definitely a 16 volt. So you just take that into account and it makes it really pretty handy. And here we go with another LED panel. It's actually at 18 volts. Uh, this is from the same lighting, so I assume that this is actually pretty bright, although this thing was getting real hot. That's why these are soldered to an aluminum plate. And then I have uh, this one, so 18 volts, and it's about optimum brightness. And yeah, I like finding these weird LED things. This one's weird because it's too white, too blue, too white, too... I assume it was supposed to be red, but these things are pink. Too white and then too green, so... All these crazy LED things, and that's one of the reasons I have this, is because these are great for just all sorts of projects. It's really pretty neat. And those kind of LEDs are always driven by these little switching power supplies. These are the power supplies that are in everything from the computers to the little phone charger bricks. The problem with these is that they're very noisy. They're very efficient and very compact, but they're extremely noisy as far as uh, electric electrical noise is concerned. Something like this would have a hundred times less electrical noise, you know, three to five millivolts or 0 0.003 to 0 0.005 volts of noise, where a switching power supply can have 0 0.2, 0 0.5 volts, you know, over a half a volt of just pure noise, not even usable power. I'll take a quick look inside this just to, you know, show people what's inside one of these power supplies. I'm not very good at explaining what it is. I don't know if I did mention, many have fans. This one is passively cooled because it runs all the power through a transistor uh, to regulate it in such a precise fashion. That transistor gets very hot, so this one has a very big heat sink. And yes, when you're running this at 90 watts of output on a fanless heat sink, that heat sink is like 120 degrees. I actually put a little fan on if I'm ever using it that hard. One last, or before I open it up, when you operate these, and I forgot to mention, that you'll hear various clicking sounds when you go through certain voltage ranges. And that's because the way that these work is they essentially are like a, a high quality audio amplifier where it's always running um, at full power. Basically, the easiest way to describe it is kind of like having your engine sitting there in neutral or redline. When you're ready to go, you actually put it in gear and let out the clutch while still having the engine floored the entire time. That way, it's always ready to deliver uh, its maximum abilities at any moment's notice. And because of that, they do generate a lot of heat. They're very inefficient. You know, less than 50% of the power that comes out of the wall, you can actually get out of the front of this. And because of the voltage range, they have a transformer set up with multiple windings so that if you're in the lower, say, you know, below 8 volt range, that it doesn't have to, the transistor doesn't have to dissipate 22 volts worth of additional extra power if you're only using 8 volts. So what it does is it switches to a low voltage winding. And then those relays are switching between the different windings as you need more voltage just to try to prevent this thing from basically always pulling maximum power out of the wall regardless of what voltage you had it set to. And so they really do need those. And let me pop the case off. Sorry this is a longer review, but I've always really been in these power supplies because they take apart so much stuff and it's just so nice to be able to uh, actually be able to test a lot of these different components. Let's see if we can't get this case to cooperate here. It's not always the most cooperative. So I guess BK is California, but this is owned by, it was owned by Max Tech uh, since this was built, and I just was noticing that. But yeah, these really are uh, still made in the USA, even though this is a Max Tech from uh, out of Chicago, Illinois. And it truly is, even these meter boards are in-house design and American-made, although this tells 1994, so this unit is pretty old. 25 years and it still is working just as good as the day one. They do have a nice crossbar on the top just to help provide additional support for the faceplate, which I really like. And just a pretty simple and clean design. There's a few potentiometers in there to adjust it. Plenty of uh, appropriately nice sized components, especially for uh, just a little 3 amp power supply. They use Nichicon capacitors, which are high quality capacitors. 
And as we can see from all these red and orange connectors, that they're using pretty nice quality, heavy gauge, uh, well-established connectors. And here's something I haven't noticed, is usually the wires on transformers are just coming straight out. But on this one, we can see that there are some blade terminals, which is actually a pretty nice feature. And if you're wondering about that little component way down there, that's actually the primary bridge rectifier, which is turning the AC into pulse DC that then is filtered by the main capacitors in the transistor to produce perfectly flat DC power. And so they just have it bolted to the bottom of the chassis just to get, act as a minor heat sink. Anyway, I'm going to end this long review here, but I just wanted to review this power supply. There's, you know, obviously many YouTube electronic engineering channels are well beyond me, but this is just for, from a tool guy, uh, getting one of these power supplies is really nice because they're really robust. As far as shorting them out or anything, they're basically impossible to destroy unless you put way too much power uh, voltage back into the terminals, like if you took a wall socket and plug it in there would be about the only way to destroy these otherwise they're very robust even if you had it a max output with the wires crossed a quality unit like this is actually designed to run at maximum output for extended periods of time you just come back to a power supply that was extremely hot and you would wonder why until you notice you had wires crossed anyway i really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing until next time caddis maximus out